But let's uh, let's cut to Serena. The last line of the scene with Moira and Rita is Moira saying to her, or you could let her rot. And then they cut to Serena. And she really looks like she's rotting. I love that you brought it up earlier, Scarlett, because it is such a cool shot of her sitting in her little glass box, rotting away. I, I thought that she looked... Um... I thought that she looked gorgeous in the shot. In the most <laughs> I mean, gorgeous in like a dilapidated Serena way. But, yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. In a dilapidated, rotting, gothic sort of way. Um, her skin looked sallowed. Um, the lighting was cold. You had that like weird, like, soggy snow falling. Like, to me, it read as. If she were wearing a different outfit and didn't look so... Even her clothing choice felt grossly inappropriate with the flowing blouse and, like, the long silk pants and the high heels. Like, everything the heels. about it. What is up with the heels? The heels are a little excessive, but the flowing I'll give her because it was super maternity and I thought that was exactly the maternity clothes that Serena would wear. It was super maternity for spring or for summer, well, not for winter. She's in a box. She ain't got nowhere to go anywhere. She can wear whatever season Gr- she feels like. Grant, granted, but for me, that's what made it feel like a bit more like gothic and cold and like a bit decaying because she felt out of place out of, and as like, though the she wrong had been plucked. Yeah. Yes, she had been pl- like pl- cast asunder into this box a year, like six months beforehand, and like time has moved on. No, and she is really still trapped. Good point. I love that. I see all of that. That's great. But yeah, those fucking high heels. <laughs> oh, she's so ridiculous. So when Rita uh, comes in, Serena's so happy to see her, like just over the moon to see her. And Rita, again, that deprogramming has to happen. Uh, she calls her ma'am, and Serena doesn't correct her. Like we're not in that time and we're not in that place anymore, but she is still totally okay with Rita calling her by her title. And Rita looks so downcast. Serena says, praise be his blessed mercy. Yuck. And then she says, I try not to be on my feet for too long as they're sitting. And I'm like, don't wear high heels. Yeah, don't wear high heels. And then also Serena is taking this pregnancy exactly as I would expect her to. Like she is a (laughs) dewdrop on a goddamn rose petal. Like fuck, she is exhausting. She just answered the door it's been 30 seconds like oh my gosh yeah this is so serena exactly how i imagined serena to be pregnant <laughs> uh, so melodramatic and so keeping with that same sort uh, that same serena that we saw in the faux like wives birthing scenario just like laying so deeply into the as though this pregnancy is like so physically catastrophic to her every fiber of her being darling you are barely out of the second trimester to be fair that's probably her concern it's not so much that it's so exhausting on her it's that this is the miracle baby that she's always waited for and standing just the gravity alone could ruin this for her Okay, fair enough. Seriously, though, I think that's really probably what her concern is more of. But seriously, like you said, you stood up to answer the door, you greeted Rita, and then you're going to say, please sit down, I'm trying not to be on my feet too long. Serena, what do you do when you have to go to the bathroom? (laughs) What do you do when you have to walk the two minutes down the corridor to get to your church? Are you kidding me? Serena's perfect. She doesn't poop. (laughs) And I just love how Rita is like, no, I don't actually know why I'm here. And then Serena presents her with her pride and joy ultrasound picture. And if she wasn't so detestable, I would be genuinely happy for her. I would be. But I'm also not a fan of slave owners procreating. So the Rita is happy for her. Like, you can tell Rita can't help but be happy about this. I, I do feel like she couldn't hold that back. But she gets right to the heart of the issue. She's like, I thought, you know, I didn't know the commander could. And then Serena goes on about, like, all the things that they did, they've done in Gilead. About the clean air, the clean water, God's grace. It's all through their efforts that Fred's sperm was magically able to impregnate her, maybe. Marjorie, you're, you're making a face like you got things to say. Do you yeah, want to go first? Yeah, I mean, I have so much to say. I feel like the biggest thing for me, and it, it was it made it self-evident before Serena even managed to sit back down from answering the door while she's having that conversation with Rita. And I'm like, you know, Serena still hasn't come to grips with the fact that Gilead was bad for anyone but her. Like, she's now in Canada. She's rid herself of the Gilead clothes, the Gilead husband. She she wants her freedom. And yet, she can't even acknowledge as Rita walks in the door 
that Rita shouldn't be calling her ma'am. Like, like, like that just, the fact that you were saying, Scarlett, that that doesn't even, like, jump out at her as, like, no, 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 we don't have to do that. Can you get, like, she, there's none of that. She, she thinks that Rita is her friend, but then she treats her like the property that she sees her as. And that's where I'm, like, she's delusional. She's delusional. Before she even managed to sit back down and talk about the baby, I'm like, she just doesn't get it. She doesn't, she will only see how Gilead hurt her. Everyone else is just a side character to her story. And she can't see anything else but her own needs and wants and desires. And therefore she can't see Rita as anything other than a friend. And I do think that um, the baby news suspends reality for a moment for even Rita because it's so... It's such a monumental thing for any baby in Gilead. We saw Lydia's reaction when June was pregnant. Like, people lose their shit over babies. And 86 kids being carted out of Gilead. Like, that's just going to stop people in their track. The fact that the Waterfords are pregnant seemingly on their own accord is a surprising thing to Rita, who's been in their household for X amount of years. Um, Like, it's just all that deprogramming that you were saying. If she's going to have to slowly untangle herself from any of these people and any of their their bullshit, like, it's just not her problem anymore. And that's the arc that I loved watch playing out because it's a slow arc. And in this scene, initially, when I watched this, I was like, oh, Rita, no, why? (laughs) Like, don't do it but then after watching the whole episode and watching it back i'm like no this makes perfect sense i love the way that they wrote rita struggling with trying to figure out how she feels about these people Uh uh-huh exactly because whether she was in it willingly or unwillingly like what a struggle it is for rita to be feeling like all these conflicting emotions and then this this is usually such a happy occasion but that heaviness of gilead is still there it hangs over everything like a haze it's so palpable in this um particular scene not just the weight of gilead as an institution but also the weight of gilead insofar as how it's dictated how serena and rita have interacted with each other for all of these years and rita wants to be happy for this miracle that she that she knows that Serena's wanted and she acknowledges it as such and Rita wants to be happy for the fact that it's a boy and you know that that must hit her a little close to home too considering she lost her own son um but there is still that that hesitation when Serena says it's nice to have a friend and Rita Rita smiles but she doesn't respond in kind and Rita not responding in kind is as close as she's going to get at this point to, like, acknowledging that they're not friends. And she does get to that point eventually by the end of the episode. But Serena hits all of those emotional marks that's going to muddy the waters for Rita as well. By Serena asking Rita, would you pray with me? Like, of course Rita's going to because that's going to appeal to her core religious like ethos regardless of whether or not she's praying in a gilead sanctified way or in the way that is appropriate for her for her so serena in this case i think played played it the exactly how fred would play it if fred were a woman he manipulated the situation he twisted things in just a subtle enough of a way to get the, uh, to evoke an emotional response from rita to try to uh, to try to move the I uh, move the uh, the uh, the chess pieces forward in her favor. So I don't think that Serena was being manipulative in this situation. I think that she shows her hand of how she truly feels and views Rita by not being manipulative. I feel like she is being completely forthright when she says all these things to Rita, and she truly expects Rita to be as excited for her with this news as can you like she treats her like the best friend that Serena thinks she is but only Serena thinks this is a friendship Rita knows even in that moment even when she can't quite respond to say Serena we're not friends Rita knows like you can see it in her eyes as she looks at her when Serena greets her and says you know whatever she says about her being her friend um Rita's uncomfortable with that because they're out of Gilead and really Serena's not acting like they're out of Gilead and that's the issue if she was being manipulative then she would she would act differently I feel like when she says my lovely she says my lovely Rita 
And then she continues with, you were such a blessing. Those two lines coupled together is what starts to snap Rita out of that, like, baby joy that kind of clouded up the middle of the scene. And by saying my, first of all, that's possessive. And then she says, you were such a blessing. So she's essentially saying, and I think that Serena truly believes that Rita was such a lovely Rita and such a blessing to her. She, Serena doesn't realize that her blessing was the fact that Rita was her slave. Like, I just don't under. That's the issue here is that Serena can't see that. That's why Serena's delusional. Exactly. She doesn't realize that this was not a two-way street of a friendship or mm -hmm. a relationship. Yep. Rita knows it. And Serena uh -huh. can't see it. So that's what I mean by I don't think she's being manipulative in a, Fred, yeah. in a Fred way. Because I think in the Fred situation, he does know. When Rita corrects him kind of quickly with like, or when he actually just kind of misspeaks and says, you know, I didn't recognize you. And it's like, well, yeah, she's not wearing her state sanctioned uniform. Like, of course, you don't recognize her. And he catches himself and kind of reels it back of like, how's your family now that you're out of Gilead? And Serena can't even acknowledge that Rita has other family. She doesn't ask her how she is. How's your people? All she thinks is, well, you're here to take care of me because you're my family. But Serena just doesn't realize what Gilead was to everyone else except for her. For her, it was just a means to have a baby. And she won't see that Rita was property. She won't see that June was raped. She's just not seeing any of that. She's entirely delusional. I agree with you entirely that Serena is delusional. I, I really, truly do. Yeah, I know we're I saying the same thing. I just, I'm not seeing the manipulation as much as I think that's her mistakenly showing her hand, but I know we're saying the I same thing. I think she thing, honestly thought that she was greeting a friend with this wonderful news. Yeah, that's what I'm I thinking. Think, yeah. I, th I think that, but I, I got to disagree with both of you on this because I think that like, I think that she was greeting her as a friend, but I think considering then she then served Rita with papers to, uh, to play in her, uh, to her defense without discussing with Rita first while they were in person. That's what, uh, that's what made me, uh, shift my view to this, um, this scene. At first I was like, this is just Serena. Like she wants to share this news with someone who is like of kin with her. And like, it's gotta be such amazing, like, glorious news to share a wanted pregnancy with a friend and like like especially someone who's been there through your infertility struggles so like my first view with this scene i was like i was like yeah there's no i was like this is just her sharing this as a friend and like a delusional insane friend but then after watching rita get served with those papers by twello and watching rita's reaction and knowing that there was no conversation that serena had with rita beforehand and have serena never once said as my friend, would you feel comfortable with the uh, with like having this discussion? Because this is how my case is moving forward, and I want to see how you would feel with this. That's the conversation a friend would have. Someone who's trying to uh, trying to uh, utilize an emotional manipulation and having this gorgeous reunion where they talk about like a new baby and there's tears. Let's pray over this baby, and then the take the sonogram with you. Exactly. So that way you can look at, look upon him whenever you want because you're here to help me raise this boy, this sort of sense of ownership. It's psychological, like emotional manipulation to then serve those uh, serve those uh, papers to speak in Serena's defense. Okay. And, I like what you're saying there. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Keep going. No, no. And like, and also double down, I like to double down on it. Like Fred, our classic quintessential manipulator, when he meets up with Rita and he says, it's nice to see a friendly face. First off, he should shakes his head no while he's saying that which means that like subconsciously he already knows that he's lying but that's but i'll get into that rita's response of we aren't friends he immediately drops the facade because he's like i have no power here anymore he's like no i suppose you're right so what do you want he's willing to acknowledge that he can't play the manipulation game with her anymore because rita is a free woman serena is still trying to play the fucking manipulation game so that's like yeah. I uh, politely disagree with both of you here. So I'm still going to disagree because the reason why I don't see it as manipulation and I just see it more as Serena's straight up delusion, it's because w with Serena treating Rita like, oh, she's my friend. And then she she starts um, saying like basically assuming that Rita is just going to come on board and stick with Serena and help raise this baby. She's asking Rita to come on board as her nanny. Like, she still has some sort of sway over Rita 
even though they're in Canada. Like she assumes that this is your, this is you and this is your place and this is what you're going to come do. But I feel all the feels for you, but this is what you're going to come do. And then when she hands her those papers, it's her entitlement that's making her do that. It's not manipulation. What came before wasn't manipulation. She automatically thought that Rita was just naturally going to do what she said she was going to do. There doesn't need to be any manipulation because she's used to Rita just doing what she wants her to do. Yeah. Okay. And the delusion because she can't see why she would do anything exactly. else. Like, exactly. Like, she does not see this as literally a master slave owner situation. She sees Rita as her kindly mammy that's going to come look after her children. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a really good And why good would point. she ever want to do anything different? Because she doesn't realize that Rita has choices now and she can choose not to put up with Serena's bullshit anymore.